I wanted to get this item a couple of years ago. It just came in, but I only ordered this within 10 days ago. And these are round LCD displays. So it's good they're packaged in these rigid cases so they don't break. So when I have something new like this, I like to get two if I can so that I have a spare if I do something and break one. But if I can get these displays working, they could be things like gauges showing a sensor reading or two eyes for a creepy maybe Halloween project. So I'll have to try some projects with this 1.28 inch 240 by 240 and the display driver is a GC9A01 and I believe the pins look to be a typical SPI type interface. So presumably there's drivers and project examples out there. Another package I ordered recently I'm going to need to darken some of these labels. This one has information on the other side. I ordered these all the same time. It's three different JFETs or NPN transistors, depending if I got ripped off. This says 20 pieces of 2N5457. That's a common enough JFET. 20 pieces 2N5484, similar. And 10 pieces 2N3819. I've had these before. Naturally, the first thing to do is see if this tester can detect what it is. Sometimes it has trouble detecting a legitimate JFET, but this is a good place to start. This first one does say 2N5457. It is certainly testing as NPN. I'll try it again. Plan B, diode check mode. So NPN should mean positive on the base in the center and negative on one of the ends gives us a diode drop and a diode drop like an NPN would do. All right, maybe I can make some audio amplifiers that use BJTs. Going to tape up that hole, put these back in and figure out what I want to do with them later. So that's labeled more clearly now. I'll try the 2N5484. I did successfully get JFETs on AliExpress in the past though, so it's just hit and miss. This says it's two diodes back to back. Okay, try again. So that's an ambiguous test. It's saying it kind of looks like a transistor. Try it backwards. So it is showing a resistance between what it's thinking are pins two and three. That could be a JFET. Try something else in the breadboard. If I go to resistance mode, not knowing the pinouts offhand, I just want to try some things. So I'm getting a high resistance between any two pins. Now, if I try to short two pins and then probe resistance to the other pin, if this is a JFET end channel, I should be able to open the gate and get some sort of a resistance, like a couple of hundred ohms. Okay, 231 or so ohms. If I short the middle and the far right and probe resistance from there to the far left. So this does look like it could be a JFET. So 2N5484 and 2N3819. NPN transistors. Back to diode mode, positive on the base in the center, and we get PN diode junctions on both sides. That's one reason to buy these things in different batches, maybe even different part numbers and from different sellers, because maybe you'll get one out of three that actually work. And of course, I'm using JFETs with the sockets on the all pass filters where I'm working on audio phase effect circuits and I need four matched JFETs. I wanted to try different part numbers to see if I can get the performance of my previous experiment improved. And I needed some parts for a different project. These came relatively quickly. 
20 pieces of 4021, a CMOS shift register, eight parallel inputs that you can then clock out serially. I'm going to be using these soon if my project works for some NES or SNES gamepad controller based circuits because that's what they use to clock the button data into the console. A couple of things for parts inventory. Four different toggle switches. So for this blue style, the double pull, double throw just goes on to on. Single pull, double throw has center off or on and on. For the red ones, single and double pull, they are both momentary in each direction. So these are just inventory to fill in the gaps with other toggle switches I have bought so that I can have different combinations available for single and double pull and whether I want to have a center off or just on on when I'm making a project where I want multiple selection options. And also these momentary ones, if I want something like a switch to act as a feature control, I can just momentarily press something up a certain number of times to sort of scroll one way or scroll the other way to get through some built-in features on the circuit. And I am planning to start actually building some projects inside these type of enclosures of different sizes I have. So I wanted to make sure I have as many different kinds of switches available as I may need. And speaking of enclosures like this, I couldn't resist ordering this on AliExpress, a cheap little guitar effect pedal. This one's analog chorus, so it has a DC 9 volt jack, controls for rate and depth of the effect, on off switch and an LED, input and output audio jacks. This was like 11 something dollars, so that's why I couldn't resist and also morbid curiosity whether or not this would even work because I couldn't help recognize this style of enclosure closely resembles this vintage phase effect that I had bought, same style case. This one was like 16 or 17 dollars. Both times these were on sale and this phase effect circuit is the one that didn't work out of the box there's this little trimmer pot I had to locate in here and adjust to even get it doing anything near what it's supposed to do. And then it still wasn't really working very well. So I'm still looking into maybe are there bad op amps or something. So let's see what's going on with this one. And I'll be using this to test. So nothing is turned on right now. If I turn it on, have to turn the depth control up to get it to actually start doing some sort of modulation. And the rate is on the minimum, so I'll turn that up just to get started. So that's a chorus. So it slightly modulates the pitch up and down, simulating two simultaneous sound sources where they would be naturally not identical and it would sound like a chorus of sound sources. So for $11, I guess this worked out okay.
it works. So it's good for once to have found a very low cost thing that does work, even if a $150 or $200 one may sound like it has more control over it. I don't have an expensive version of this effect, so I can't really directly compare, but if this is the only one that I really have, then at least for once it's not a disappointment. Thanks to supporters of the channel for helping make all this possible.